What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Decno Buffalo here with a full review for you of AT&T's HTC One X. Let's go ahead and dig in and see if the carrier branded Snapdragon S4 powered One X deserves a spot in your pocket. All right, so this guy is going to be available on May 6th. Pre-orders are going on now for $199 with a two-year contract or $550 if you want to get it without a contract. Definitely go ahead and check the carrier's website for prices because that may change by the time you're watching this video. All right, so this review is going to be broken down into six categories. We're going to talk about hardware, software, camera, call quality and data, battery life, and then draw a conclusion. If at any time you want further explanation of anything that I'm saying, be sure to hit the link down below to go to the full written review on technobuffalo.com. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about hardware and run through the specs of this guy. From a dimension standpoint, it is 5.3 inches by 2.75 inches by 0.36 inches. And it weighs 4.6 ounces. And for those of you that like to keep track of things at home, that is one ounce heavier than the International Tegra 3 model. The display is, of course, always measured diagonally. It's 4.7 inches with a resolution of 720 by 1280. That is a super LCD screen. Powering this guy is a 1,800 milliamp hour battery that HTC and AT&T advertise will get you 8.5 hours of talk time. Uh, it's being powered by a 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 dual core processor. Uh, the international version is running Tegra 3, which is quad core. Uh, this version for LTE compatibility uh, has the very modern dual core processor, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we move forward. Uh, RAM, it's got one gig. Internal storage is 16 gigs, and it's capped 16 gigs. There is not a micro SD card to be found on this guy. From a camera standpoint, we are looking at an eight megapixel camera on the back with an LED flash and can shoot 1080p HD video. That's not the only camera this guy's got. It also has a front facing 1.3 megapixel sensor. Network, so it does run LTE, it's LTE compatible. So if you're in LTE area, you'll be getting some blazing 4G speeds. Uh, and as is the case with all of AT&T's LTE phones, it falls back on HSPA Plus if you're outside of an LTE area. Bluetooth 4.0 and is available in two colors, white and gray. It's also rocking Beats audio technology uh, and includes HTC's image chip and Sense 4.0. All right, so let's talk about screen and hot diggity dog. This is one of the most beautiful screens I have ever seen on a mobile device. The 4.7 inch 720 by 1280 Super LCD screen is the new hotness. Text looks absolutely awesome on this. Uh, if you're viewing a website and you wanna pinch to zoom in and see how crisp and clear text is gonna look, the answer is it's gonna look very crisp and extremely clear, no pixelation at all. Uh, but that's true with most phones. Uh, photos look absolutely great on here, and video is going to totally pop. So if you want a phone that's gonna have a gorgeous screen, uh, this is definitely the one. But because it's high, such high resolution, uh, there are some downsides as well. Look at the icon rows here. So you're limited to four across, uh, and there's a huge space in between them. If you go ahead and look, I mean, you can almost get a whole other row of icons in between them. Uh, visually, for me, I found it to be a bit annoying. So you might want to turn to some third-party launchers. They're going to give you some control over what you can do and how many icons the home screen will show. All right, so next, let's jump into software. This guy is running the latest version of Android Ice Cream Sandwich. It's shipped with version 4.0.3. Uh, it also has HTC's Sense 4.0 added. Uh, and that adds a decent amount of options here. So for example, the highlight, at least for me, is the lock screen. Uh, you can go ahead and customize what icons you've got on the lock screen. And when you want to open one up, you just drag it into the ring and that's going to quick launch uh, wherever you are located. Uh, widgets here, of course, you've got HTC's custom widget array uh, and there are quite a few. Um, so if you go ahead and go in long press, you're able to go to widgets and you can see everything that HTC added in here, including a ton of clocks and they're really iconic now, uh, weather clock options, and there are now two options there uh, to go ahead and pick what you would like. Uh, one of the knocks that I do have though on Sense 4.0 is how they handle multitasking. I really liked how uh, original, raw, unskinned ice cream sandwich handled multitasking. You got a whole row of applications. You can go ahead and pick the one you want. On Sense 4.0, you really can only see one at a time. So right there, I've got recent apps. Now I can see that there's one to the left, there we go. 
So I can see that there's one to the left and one to the right, but I can't really see what they are and they're not labeled. So if I wanna go ahead and see what I've got, I gotta go ahead and scroll over to go ahead and see that was gallery and that was camera and that's internet. Now to close, it's still the same way that we saw an ice cream sandwich. Go ahead and swipe it right off the screen. And that is always very satisfying and fun, uh, but a little bit of a knock on Sense 4.0. Uh, one of the other knocks I have on Sense 4.0 is the keyboard that shipped with this guy I found to be absolutely atrocious. Take a look at how crowded that guy is. You've got four arrow keys on the bottom taking up precious real estate uh, and keys that are a little bit too narrow for me. But one of the nice things about Android is if you don't like this keyboard, you don't have to use this keyboard. Uh, but if you're the kind of person that's not gonna go and download third-party keyboards uh, from Google Play, this is what you're gonna have to live with. And it's not very good. Further sort of rounding up what HTC offers here, uh, you've got some customization options as well. If you go into settings and go into personalize, uh, you've got things called skins and scenes, and they can kind of be a bit confusing what the differences are, uh, but it can customize the way your device looks to make it sort of suit your uh, need or what you are, where you are. So if you want to you know, work one, you can have work options. Uh, there are a lot of choices and they sort of just tweak how things look. Uh, Sense goes much deeper than that, uh, but on the outside, those are the uh, most common visual cues and the ones that I used uh, the most. All right, so next let's talk about camera. And camera is something I usually gloss over in my reviews because I'm not that big of a camera guy. The pictures look fine, they look fine. Uh, but something that I really want to address here on the One X, this guy can capture pictures in 0.7 seconds and autofocus in 0.2, meaning you can take a ton of pictures and just have to keep the best one. Uh, it really became a very impressive feature of the phone. I found myself using the camera more because I knew I was going to get that perfect shot. Uh, image sense adjusts the flash, but it's not always so great in dark light. Uh, 1080p video on here looks absolutely great. If you're the kind of shutter bug that really wants a camera that can replace your point and shoot, or at least come close enough to replace your point and shoot, uh, really look no farther than the HTC One X. All right, so next let's talk about call quality. If it's not gonna make good phone calls, it's not gonna be much use to you. Uh, it's got a pretty strong antenna. I've got the SIM card out of it right now, so it doesn't ring when I'm filming this. Uh, but I was able to pull down a solid four to five LTE bars uh, wherever I was in Southern California. Now, certainly that's going to depend on where you are and what, uh, how strong your network is and how many people are on it. Uh, but the antenna here was very strong. In my 20 call test, I had no drop calls. Uh, call quality was very good as well. Uh, one of the things that I did find that I didn't like about it uh, was it did not have the best background filtering. Uh, Todd, for example, made a call from an airport and able to hear just as clearly as you could hear him what was going on in the background. Uh, the speakerphone as well was a little bit on the quiet side, so if you rely heavily on speakerphone for you know, in car or in office, uh, you may want to give this a shot before you buy it. Uh, battery, so it's being powered by a 1,800 milliamp hour battery that really isn't half bad. Uh, I was able to get 7.5 hours of talk time, which was an hour shorter than what HTC and AT&T advertise. And those are pretty simple tests on 100% full charge, a call a radio station, and leave it on hold and let it go until the phone died. And it was just a little bit past seven and a half hours. However, though, on regular usage and using it for maybe an hour or so of phone calls, uh, pulling into emails, web browsing, and text messaging, I was very easily uh, able to get through a full day with about 30% battery left. So pretty strong battery here as well. All right, so I know what you guys wanna talk about, benchmarks and performance. How is this guy gonna stack up uh, to not only the international Tegra 3 version, uh, but also the other phones in AT&T's pretty extensive uh, phone lineup. This guy is an absolute screamer and handled everything we threw at it with a plum. Uh, quadrant. 5,055, CF Bench 12,517, and these are unmodified ROMs, they're pretty impressive scores. So whether or not you're a heavy gamer or you watch a lot of video, uh, don't be deterred by dual core here. Uh, certainly you think more core is better performance and you do get a little bit better performance when it comes to games, uh, but overall this has been the fastest experience that I've had on a mobile phone. I really came away impressed with what Qualcomm has done with the Snapdragon S4. I talked about hardware, software, camera, call quality, and battery life. What's the conclusion on this guy? Well, I'm guessing you can tell I'm a big fan. In fact, this phone is going to get a 9.0 on our really strict 10.0 scale and is going to get our first Editor's Choice Award. It is the fastest Android experience that I've used. There isn't any sort of Android lag at all. Uh, Qualcomm's S4 chip handled everything like a rock star. I haven't been the biggest fan of Qualcomm's chipset in the past, but the S4 looks to change that. 
Everything about this phone screams awesome sauce, from that ridiculously gorgeous screen to the industrial build quality to Beats Audio being built in and now being extended to third-party apps, HTC One X is definitely the best phone in AT&T's lineup. If you're looking to get a phone right now, you should not hesitate to pick up a One X, the phone that's not only gonna serve you well now, but it's gonna serve you well over the next two years of your contract. Don't worry that it doesn't have Tegra 3 and Quad Core. Uh, we did notice a little bit of an improvement in when it came to quad core for gaming, uh, but this handled games quite well and everything else, it was an absolute rock star. Uh, so two thumbs up to AT&T's One X. HTC, Google, and AT&T did an awesome job to bring LTE and uh, just a really impressive package to the market. Uh, so again, this is gonna get a 9.0 and an editor's choice on the very strict uh, Techno Buffalo grading scale. If you guys want a more thorough explanation of anything I talked about, hit the link down below for the written review. Do you agree, disagree with my review of the HTC One X? I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.